Hi everyone, this is Frank again from Musto Wine Grape. We've got uh, a session for you today on storage vessels, and they range, but I want to go over every different type you can possibly use. So we're going to start off with the carboys. Most people that start winemaking begin with carboys, which are glass or plastic vessels. Now notice this one I have has a piece of tin foil over it. When I store my carboys, I just like to cover them up so that bugs and dirt don't get inside. And then when I'm ready to use them, I just take it off. Now, we had a session on cleaning and sanitizing. Before I use this, I'm gonna put a little bit of sulfide in it first, correct? Every storage device that I'm gonna put wine into, I'm gonna give it sulfide spray or liquid, even though I've already cleaned and, and sanitized. So, carboys come in three gallon, five gallon, six gallon, or you could talk liters if you'd like. And you should have a variety of them. Um, and the, I don't use a lot of carboys myself because I have a lot of tanks, but I'm in a situation right now in my wine cellar where I do have some overflow that won't fit in my tanks, so I've got them in carboys. But besides these big guys, we need to have smaller ones also. And the reason I say that is rule number one with storing wine is you never want to leave air up on top of that wine. So you always want to top your wines up right about to the neck. All right, so that's the trouble with carboys is they always have to be filled. All right, not that it's a real problem, but we'll get into tanks later on, which take that uh, concern away. Now, you should also have one gallon and half gallon containers. And here's a situation I have right over here is I had some wine left over, so I have a gallon filled and a half gallon filled that I have to do further degassing on. So it's good to have, I usually have at least six of each of these in the house to take care of. So I'm gonna put these back where they came from. We clean these just like we clean anything else. Our carboys, we end up putting bungs in our carboys. Now, the carboy diameter, be careful, sometimes they're different. But I wanna show you something I do over here. I made a little device which I think works pretty well. And I always get concerned. So inside of this pail, which I'll tip over for you, I have a lot of bungs in here uh, and stoppers. So I keep them in this pail, but I like to keep them clean and sanitized. So what I've done is I took a pail and I drilled holes in the bottom of it, all right? Then I took the same pail and I put sulfite in the bottom of this one. So you notice there's all sulfite powder in there. Sulfite, the fumes alone will help protect this. So I put some fresh sulfite in here. I drill holes in this pail and when you drop it in, drop it in very slowly or it will come up and, and hit you right in the face and knock you out. So a little trick on how to store your, your, your carboys, your air traps and so forth. So, I'm going to try to find a bung that fits this. This one's a little bit too small. And there's different types of bungs, by the way. You've got your rubber stoppers. This is a number 10. The, the, the size is on top of this, okay? This is a solid bung. This has a hole in it. This has a hole in it because we can put an air trap inside of it, which I'm going to do in a minute. The other type you can buy is it's more of a, a flexible one. So if I put this one in, these will work fine too but these will take a set after a while, whereas these seem to last a little bit longer, but I have both that I use. So if I've got wine in here and I'm gonna put a bung in it, the first thing I'm gonna do is I would wash and clean this, dry it off, dry it off, put your bung in first, then put your air trap in. Don't put your air trap in with it, because when you put it in now, it's gonna push it harder, which is good. Now there's two ways to fill this. You could take your SO2 spray and you could spray this until you fill it halfway. Or another little trick that I like to do is I use vodka. And I put vodka inside the same amount. The reason I use vodka is SO2 dissipates over time. So if you have an ear trap filled with this for a month or two, it could go neutral on you. In other words, the SO2 is useless. If you put vodka in it, it lasts forever. So I tend to use vodka on all my ear traps. So when we put this in, all right, um, we're filled up to here. We've got our bubbler on here, we're all set. So this is the proper way to store. Once your wine is done with any type of activity or gas, then you could take this one out and you can go to a solid bung. 
So this one just doesn't have a hole in it. So I could pull this one out and put this one in. Now you might come down the next day and the bung is gone. And that's because there was still gas in there. It popped it off and blew it on the floor. You need to go back to this. So don't panic if, you're, if the bung popped out. That just means there was still gas in that wine. I need to take care of it. All right, two types of air traps. You have the one piece and you have the three piece. <clears throat> you can use either one. The three piece is obviously easier to clean. Notice this one looks powdery. I had it, I had it in sulfite. It's, it's keeping it sanitary. This one you fill it with vodka or SO2, drop the cap in and put it on. Now the reason for an air trap, by the way, is simple. Is if we have an air trap in our carboy, like so, we don't want air in our wine. Yet if there's gas, we want it to come out. So if there's gas in here, it'll bubble or burp its way through. You'll hear bloop, bloop, and that means you still got gas coming out, but we're not getting any air in. The air can't make it through the water or the vodka. So very important. Top your, top your carboys up, no matter what size they are, whether it's a gallon, a half gallon, make sure it's fully covered. For those of you that are using demijohns, do the same thing. Bung them up, put an air trap on them. Just remember, with the demijohn, there's a lot of wine in there, and you need to make sure that if you take some out, a bottle, you've got to fill that up again. You can't let, the, the biggest fault as a winemaker is if you take wine out of a container and you leave this much wine in there, that air inside there is going to combine with the alcohol, causing oxidation, and your wine's going to start to taste like sherry or rotten apples. It's going to smell funny like that. It's going to lose the fruit flavor. That's your fault. Wine doesn't oxidize on its own. If you top it off, you don't have any leaks, your wine will not oxidize, all right? Um, another little trick with storage vessels, by the way, is most of the bacteria that starts in your wine starts at the top. Why? Because that's where the oxygen is. So if I open up a carboy to take a taste or, or to smell, before I put it away, I take this guy and I give it a couple shots on top, SO2. If I open up one of my tanks and I smell a little rotten apple smell in there, I will spray the heck out of it on top of SO2. The next day the smell is gone. So don't be afraid to spray the top of your storage devices. It really helps. And you should be checking on them. Don't leave it for a few months. You need to check on that as often as you can. Like I used to check my wines once a week. I'll taste every one, I'll smell it, make sure they're okay. You might have a leak and it's gonna get air in there. And if you go away for a while, you're gonna end up with a, 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 an oxidation problem. Okay, so that's enough on carboys. Now we're gonna talk about tanks next, all right? And once you get past your carboys, if you're making enough wine where you feel like, if you have three to four carboys of a, of a Merlot, I think it's time for you to move into a tank. They, for the money you spend for four carboys, you should be looking at a tank. And tanks have so many benefits to them. Um, probably the only negative is it might cost you more than you want to spend, but when you add up what you're spending for the carboys, it makes a big difference. So this happens to be 100 liter. I have about 15 tanks, all different sizes. I have 250s, 200s, 150s, but I have a lot of hundreds because I like to buy eight to 10 cases of grapes and make 25 gallons, which is 100 liters. So if I decide to make a cab and I get 10 cases, I could fill this tank to the top. And I don't believe in filling half a tank of wine. I believe in filling it right to the brim. So a uh, little argument between me and my wife on that one, but I like to fill that son of a gun up just like a cup of coffee. Same amount of work, just a little bit more money, but that's okay. So let's put a tank together. So when you buy a tank, by the way, you get a stand with it, but I built my own stand because I have so many tanks. Um, you get a stand with it, you get a spigot with it, which is an awesome thing because that spigot allows me to go and take a sample of wine right now. If I want to try a wine or do a sample or a test on it, I can take it out of the bottom. This is called the variable capacity tank. What that means is I could have this much wine, this much wine, this much wine. Why? Because we have a lid that floats on the inside. This lid goes inside and it floats on top of the wine like a boat. So variable capacity means I could have 100 liters, 70, uh, 72, 10, I don't care. 
But let me show you how this goes together. Now this normally comes with a, a, a marble ear trap, which I'd recommend that you take that out and you put in, just buy a regular bung and put in a regular air trap and you're as good as gold. I don't like the marble air traps because I've seen too many leakages on those. You're expecting a round marble to fill a round pocket. So let's put this together. So we have a couple different balloons here. This is the balloon that comes with the tanks that you get from Italy and so forth. Uh, many of you have seen these. Um, this is what kind of turns people off the tanks because they get oxidation, air gets in. But that's because of the way the seam is on this. There's a seam where they weld this together that's very sharp. And I've seen it myself where when you pump this up, it ends up, you see bubbles coming out of there. The air is going to get in if air can get out. So I've converted all my tanks over to a different type of a, they call them a bladder too. So let me show you that bladder. This one's like a bicycle tires. It's not that much money. It's also seamless. There's no seam on this one, which is crucial. Okay. It also comes with a, a brass stem on it, which is great compared to the other one that's on there. So I'm going to put this on. They give you a little hole that you stick it through the, the stem and be careful. This stainless is sharp and I've cut myself on it. I'm going to put that through. I'm going to put the nut on it. Just for now, I'm going to snug it up by hand. And then you just kind of have to walk this balloon around. So you don't need two people for this, but you do need your legs. Just kind of get it around. And then once you get it on, don't leave it like this because if you don't have this in the right place, when you go to pump it up, you could push down on the wine and wine oozes out and you want to know what's wrong. You need to center this. So I'm going to take this and walk my way around it. I'm going to center this balloon in the groove. I'm going to do one more thing. So I look good there. I'm a little high over here. If you want to order these balloons, you can call and you just give your tank diameter and they'll tell you what size balloon you need. So that balloon's on right now. I'm going to tighten the nut up. Okay. Then I'm going to take the pump that comes with it. So you got a pump with a hose. They come in different uh, handle formats and so forth. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to slip this on. Remember, you want to make sure it's a clean cut. Don't put on a raggedy cut. So I have a clean cut. I have my little clamp on here. I'll back off. I'm going to put this on. I'll tighten up my clamp. And what I'll do while I'm doing something else is I'm going to pump this and blow it up. Now I'm going to back this all the way out. If I pump it right now and get it out enough to make a fool of myself, I'll go like that. See how it's not filling it up? If you close it too much and make a fool of yourself, it, it won't pump at all because you've got it shut off. So you got to back it off enough where you can pump it. And you'll see the balloons going up. They give you a gauge. Normally you fill it up to the red or there's, I have something that have a green zone on it. But what I'm doing is while this is sitting on the table, I'm going to pump this balloon up and let the balloon find itself. I'm going to tighten it up. I'll put my air trap in it. And while I'm getting ready to move the wine over, I'll actually let it sit right on top of the tank like this. And that, that will be ready to go. Now, before I bring wine into this, I'm going to take my SO2 spray. I'm going to spray under the lid and inside the tank to bring my wine in. You are not putting a lot of sulfite in your wine whatsoever. You're basically just spraying it so that it's sanitized. So remember, set, you spray your stainless before you use it, not after you use it. We put it away, just rinse and clean. One last thing you can step up to, and we're going to have a session on this, is barrels. Um, I have a barrel room, will be in there. And barrels, you could have different sizes, different oaks. We're going to talk about all that. Um, it is something that I got into a few years ago, and I wish I did sooner. Because with oak, you get tremendous uh, complexity and softness in the wine. People think you just get oak from the barrels. But when the barrel is used after about three years, it becomes neutral. 
So we're gonna talk about barrels in another session. But if you get to a point where you're making more wine, you're getting more aggressive, barrels are the way to go. It totally changes your wine. You could tell the difference. I was in stainless for years. Once I went to oak, or they, people say once you went to wood, the wine got so much better. So we'll talk about that in another session, but we want you to understand all the storage devices that you could use, and you should have them on hand. So you decide how much you want to spend, but if you, you should at least have carboys on hand to make sure that if you have any overflow, you, could, you can go. You should have half gallons, one gallons, have plenty of air traps, plenty of bungs. You don't want to be stuck on a Sunday night doing something and you don't have something to close it off with. All right, so that's our session today. I hope you learn, make some good wine. <laughs>